Hello everyone, my name is Winona. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. Hey, I got myself a new devotion book yesterday in the mail, Experiencing God. And you know, these devotions are really great. And so today's devotion really spoke to me and it's about weariness. We all experience weariness at one time or another. Bone weary, can't, can't face another day weary, that type of weary. Amen. The scripture reading is out of Matthew 11, and I'm going to be reading from my NIV, verses 28 to 30. It just spoke to me today. There's a lot happening in my, in, within my family, and I know that we are experiencing this weariness of what's happening, but when we find our strength, when we, when we find Jesus, he, he's going to help us through. I, I, I'm kind of at a loss for words. He's going to take our hand. He's going to walk us through. But the scripture that I'm going to read tells us all about it. So before I start, let me just open us up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come to you with grateful hearts. We're grateful that your words can speak to us in ways that no one else can. Even though we have friends and family that are giving us encouragement and they're praying for us and, that, and we know that that is a strong weapon. But Father, sometimes just you speaking to us directly gives us that, that courage and that strength, that rest and peace that we need. So Father God, as I read the scripture, I just pray that somebody's heart is touched by this. In your son's name, amen. So I am going to be reading in the book of Matthew, and I really love it because it's a red letter day when Jesus speaks directly to us. From these words, you know, from Matthew 11, written thousands of years ago, he's talking directly to me. He's talking directly to you. So it's, again, it's Matthew 11, and I'm going to be starting in verse 28 through 30. It says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus always, no matter all the struggles and everything that he went through, he had chaos around him constantly. How many of us lived a life that was just filled with drama and chaos? Every day there was something happening. And now I find as I'm getting older, I like my drama-free house. This, is, this house is drama-free. That, that's my rule. <laughs> but how many of us did? Jesus lived with all of this around him constantly, but he always found that time to quiet himself, kind of break away. Might have been for a few minutes, might have been for a couple hours, but he would always break away in prayer and meditation to get closer to his God, to, to have God speak to him. And God did. That was his son. God spoke to him. Jesus knew what his job was, but he had to re-energize and refuel himself through prayer with with his father amen so let me read what my study bible says about these verses a yoke is a heavy wooden harness that fits over the shoulders of an ox or oxen it's attached to a piece of equipment that the oxen are to pull a person may be carrying heavy burdens such as sin or excessive demands of religious leaders and 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 with that it's they talk about that in um, Matthew 23 and in Acts 15. Or there's oppression of persecution because you're Christian, people are getting down on you, you know. And during that time when Jesus spoke these words, yeah, these people were, they were persecuted for being Christ followers of the way. Or you might just be feeling it, um, carrying the heavy burdens of the weariness in your search for God. You don't have to, it, it doesn't have to be wearisome. It's very easy, but let me go on. Jesus frees people from these burdens. The rest that Jesus promises is love, healing, and peace with God. Not the end of all labor. We still have to get up. We still have to go to work. There's still things that we have to do. But I found in, in Colossians, I wrote it down. Where did I write it down? There's like three, Colossians and 1 Corinthians. You know, all the work that we go and we do, sometimes we find it's like, oh, I gotta go to work, or oh, geez, I gotta vacuum or dust or whatever. Don't look at it as a burden. Look at it as the work that you do, you're doing for God. Everything that you do, do it, do it for God. Read uh, Colossians 3.17, Colossians 3.23-24, or 1 Corinthians 10.31. It's all about the work that we do 
It doesn't have to be burdensome. Don't overburden yourself. Amen? But a relationship with God changes meaningless, weariless, wearisome toil into a spiritual productivity, and it gives you purpose. Amen? So remember, all that you're going to do, you have that yoke. Jesus is, you're yoked to Jesus. And all of a sudden, it's not so so wearisome. It's not it's not such a burden. It's not a job anymore. You're doing it for the Lord. Amen. So that that can get rid of that that weariness. All right. But then there's that spiritual weariness where you're in search of or you don't know Jesus, and you can't understand why you're just you just have no no desire to do anything. You know. You, you let me just read what it has to say. So. This is experiencing God, and today it's called weariness, and again, the, the scripture reading is Matthew 11, and I read 28 to 30, and it says, if you find that Christianity exhausts you, draining you of your energy, then you are practicing religion rather than enjoying a relationship. Jesus said that a relationship with him would bring you rest to your soul. Your walk with the Lord will not make you weary. It will invigorate you, restore your strength, and energize your life. Amen? Hard work or lack of sleep can make you tired. Oh, God. I deal with that, definitely. I don't sleep well. Anyway, this fatigue can usually be remedied by a good rest. But there, are deeper, but there is a deeper fatigue that goes beyond physical tiredness. There is an emotional exhaustion that comes from experiencing heavy burdens and draining crisis. There is tiredness deep within your soul that comes from carrying the weight and the need of others. You can go on a vacation, but your soul will not be restored. This condition can only be rectified by finding rest in Christ. Those Some zealous Christians want to do all they can to serve Christ, and they exhaust themselves in the process. It was to these that Jesus extended his invitation to go to him and learn from him. Jesus spent most of his earthly ministry surrounded by needy multitudes. He faced relentless opposition. He often prayed throughout the night, and he rarely had any privacy, yet he always received the rest and strength that came from his Father. It was not that Jesus did not do hard work, but that he knew the path to spiritual rest. Are you weary? Go to Jesus and give him your and let him give you his rest. His rest will restore your soul as nothing else can. Do you know Jesus? Let, we, we are given a choice. God is a gentleman. Jesus is a gentleman. He doesn't force himself upon you. Hopefully, I'm not forcing myself, my beliefs upon you. I just want it, I just want you to know. That I have found that rest. Sure, I get down and things get to me, but I know where to turn. And it's my choice to turn to him. Jesus, God, gives us choices. We aren't puppets. We, he gives us free will. So we can either turn to him and find that rest and that strength that we need to get through our day. Or we can stay earthly and, and just be that codependent that's taken everybody else's burdens upon themselves and just drag ourselves down. So you have a choice. All right. Now, I was just listening on the radio to uh, Pastor Tony Evans. And in his, his study today, he told this story. And I just, I thought it was great. So in the story, there is a young man that's in college. And he has a professor that is just driving him crazy. He has an answer for everything. You know, we all know somebody like that, right? They got an answer for everything. So this young man one day thought, I'm going to get him. He found a little bird, picked up the little bird, and he said, you know, he had it in his hand. And he said, you know what? I've got him now. I'm going to ask him, is this bird alive? I, I have this bird in my hand. Is this bird alive or is it dead? And if the, past, or if the professor says, well, it's dead. Well, I'll open up my hands and show him that the bird is alive. Or if the professor says, no, it's alive, I'll crush it to death and then show him it's dead. I've got him one way or another. So the guy goes in, this young man goes in, and he, and he asks the professor, hey, professor, let me ask you something. Is the bird that I have in my hand, is it alive or is it dead? And the professor kind of looked at him and thought for a minute and told the kid, you know what, you hold the answer 
in your hand. We hold the answer in our hand. We can make that choice. Turn to Jesus or stay in the world. Make that choice. So today, read Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30. Jesus will talk to you directly because it's a red letter day. And let him talk to you. Let him, let him take that burden off of you. Amen. No more weariness. Hey, you guys have a great day today and we will talk again soon.